Marquez brothers, yes, Rafael Marquez set to renew hostilities, coming off the impressive performance against the South African last November. Well, the 29-year-old South African Celence Mabuza says he's ready to avenge the loss he suffered nine months ago against Marquez. Mabuza earned his way back to the return title match with a really solid win in an IBF eliminator fight with Ricardo Vargas. Still, much of the build-up to this bout is centered on whether Mabuza's fight ending cut in their last match came from a punch or a clash of heads. In round three of this match, with Marquez dominating the action, their heads would come together. And it seemed right after the fight that this replay might have indicated that this created the cut over Mabuza's right eye. But a close look shows that no blood was seen following this incident. And as the round continued, well, still no blood. But later on in the round, it would be the left hand of Marquez that would in fact do some serious damage. This punch landed right above the eye. And as the action continued, we'll see a trickle of blood that could be detected coming from Mabuza's eye, and he kept blinking. Moments later in his corner, Mabuza's right eye shows the effect of that left hook. Clearly, blood is flowing. And in the fourth round, there would be more left hooks to reopen the cut, and the blood flowed freely. And in the process, the cut widened. Eventually, referee Norm Button would step in to stop the action, and he would ultimately take the advice of the ringside physician to stop the match and ended up a TKO win for Marquez. So referee Button appeared to be right despite the loud protests of Team Mabuza, who you see right there. Understandably, they wanted the no decision, which would have kept the South African undefeated. Silence Mabuza, who got his unique name when his grandmother told his arguing parents to be quiet after he was born. A very proud and poised guy from harsh and difficult beginnings, basically growing up alone in the ghetto during the apartheid era. His mother, a maid, his father, not around. He survived on his grandmother's pension, learned to fight in the streets. Tonight, a long way from despair as he gets his second opportunity in a world title, Al, and a chance for redemption. And this particular world title shot of work to him, he actually turned down a shot at the WBA title screen and instead fought in that IBF eliminator simply because he wanted to avenge this loss to Marquez. He said the first fight, well, that was about survival after he got knocked down early, late in the first round, in fact. And tonight he says this will be very, very different. He feels like he's more relaxed, more prepared, more acclimated. There's his trainer, Nick Durant, you got a glimpse of. Very outspoken guy is Mabuza. Gets through the ropes and into the ring. And what does he have to do to win this fight in the booze? Well, let's take a peek at the keys to victory. In the first fight with Marquez, he traded hooks with Marquez, and it cost him. He can't do that again. He can't stand right in front of the power-punching Marquez. That would be a mistake. His good moments in the first match came when he counter-punched the attacking Marquez. And, Steve, I think he needs to do a lot more of that in this fight. Yeah, he's got to somehow find a way to neutralize the power of Rafael Marquez. And stepping out of the shadow of his more famous older brother, here he is, the champ, Rafael Marquez, just a year younger than Juan, considered by many the best bantamweight in the world, quality KO wins over Mark Tushart Johnson, Tim Austin, then the polished and powerful performance versus Mabuza. Calls himself just a normal, regular guy, loves hanging with his family, owns a clothing boutique, talks to his friends on the internet. The only difference, he punches like a mule kick. But he's also improved dramatically in the art of boxing, Al. 
He sure has. Nacho Beristain has made him not just a puncher, but an all-around fighter. Guy who thinks knockout in every fight with 31 KOs and his 35 wins, but also very intelligent and very, very skilled. And what does Marquez have to do to win this rematch? Well, for one thing, when uh, he was over anxious, he gave Mabuza a chance to do some of that counter punching in her first fight. Doesn't want to do that. He's a superb body puncher, Marquez, and that will stop the movement Mabuza wants to use in this rematch. And while he has a great right hand, for Marquez, I think it's the left hook that will work best as a power punch here tonight, just as it did in their first match. Trained in the high altitudes of Mexico, 15,000 feet above sea level. He actually came down here in Tahoe to 6,200 feet. That's Unbelievable. Fair. All right, let's check the numbers as we uh, go to the, the tail of the tape. And as you uh, can see, every category except for their age, almost a mirror image, the only variation between the first fight and tonight's rematch, Marquez turned 31, which was in March, and yesterday's weigh-in, Marquez uh, right on, Mabuza just under. Marquez says it's his last defense at this weight. And the key unified rules for this world title affair, there's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And Mabuza, well acquainted with this. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they go to the scorecards. If a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. So here at Montlou Resort Casino in Lake Tahoe, we're getting ready for the rematch between Rafael Marquez and Silas Mabuza for the IBF and Fringe IBO Bantamweight titles. The formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the beautiful Mont Blue Casino Resort and Spa here in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. We have a big night of action coming your way, a world championship twin bill brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Romanza, Mont Blue and Showtime. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this bout coming your way is sanctioned by the IBF. President Marion Muhammad, Supervisor Lindsey Tucker, the IBO President and Supervisor Ed Levine, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Introducing to you at this time are three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Adelaide Bird. From Reno, Nevada, Burke Clements. And from Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. Introducing to you at this time, our third man to the ring, the referee in charge, working in this his 28th world title bout, Tony Weeks. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF and IBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing leopard-trimmed trunks and hailing from Takani, Johannesburg, South Africa. He weighed in at 117 and one half pounds with a record of 19 wins, one loss. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. In tonight's rematch, he is making his second attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the IBF number three ranked bantamweight contender, introducing uh, Silence, the African Spice Mabusa. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world and a champion on my right. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at the bantamweight limit of 118 pounds with a record of 35 wins and three losses. He has 31 big wins coming by way of knockout. In his three and a half year reign as champion, tonight he is making the seventh defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the defending IBF and IBO bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Rafael Marquez. Oh. 
Once again, a referee in charge, Tony Weeks, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Mega. Okay, gentlemen, Caballeros, you already received your instructions. Usted recibe instrucciones. Right here is good, and that's going to be low. Mira, aquí está bien, aquí no. Right here is good, and that's going to be low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. I want a good, clean fight. Le quiero una play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourself at all times. Escucha me, cuídate, listo, ready, let's go. Vamos. Say Gunza. Marquez very confident he will have his way again. Mabuza with other ideas. Is this in essence round five? Marquez sparkled in November. The more experienced champ can turn a fight with one punch. Terrific fight. We saw the, the right hand. We saw the compact left hook that dropped Mabuza. Mabuza's strength, the hand speed and quickness, but uh, he made the mistake of being too much of a target in the first meeting. He can't stand in front of Marquez and mix it up. He's got to move around and show angles because Marquez just has extraordinary power in both hands for a family. And the other problem for Mabuse is he just is a slow starter. As Durant and uh, the people in his camp say he just doesn't get off to quick starts, so he's got to buy time in his first couple rounds any way he can. And yeah, Mabuse, he does have power, but not like Marquez, so he really shouldn't look to trade. Marquez started uncharacteristically fast in the original, very sharp and accurate. The feeling is, and uh, this is to your point, Al, Marquez uh, will start fast again. That's what the Mabuza camp feels, because the weight issue has been difficult for him for his last three fights. And that the notion is he doesn't want to go deep into the fight, which could be a big part of Mabuza's strategy to test Marquez's conditioning. Rafael Marquez with the red gloves isn't just a puncher, he's a precision combination puncher. His slashing punches exacerbated Mabuza's cuts in the first fight. You know, they were banking in, uh, in Mabuza's uh, camp in R that Marquez will be a little over anxious in some of his attacks. Has not been here in round one. He's been very measured. Yeah, he's not starting quite as fast as uh, he did in the first fight. And, of course, late in the first round, he had Mabuza on the canvas with that beautiful jab followed by the, the left hook. And a really disoriented silence, Mabuza. Nice right uppercut on the inside by uh, Marquez. You see the Marquez jab. One of the things that Nacho Beristain, who's just a wonderful trainer, has improved, or, and Marquez himself has improved by working so hard, is the jab. He's become much better with that punch, and it allows him to do things he couldn't do earlier in his career when he was just a, a big puncher. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Almabuza is still standing in front of Marquez, like he did in the first fight. All he needs really is just a little bit. Yeah, and, uh, there's some lateral movement, but you see Marquez here in round one still finding the range with his punches, and he's showing us uh, there's that strong jab from Marquez. Oh, 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 Come and fight, my brother. Uh huh. You're in soon, sir. Give me that water. Take a mula. Baba, box. In and out, use the ring. Don't stand with him. Okay. Toward the end of that round, Marquez hurt him with a jab. We've just been talking about the jab, and that was so strong it hurt Mabuza. Now, Marquez went in with some abandon, and Mabuza doing a lot of just clutching there to hang on, but Silence Mabuza landed a couple of good punches, including a really good left hook. That was a good short left hook, followed by the right, 
Mabuza has very good hand speed, and it was evident there as he punched in desperation. Walks with him, and he's going to come out smoking again. All of a sudden, a light went on, and both got into it towards the end of the, the first round. So things getting dramatic and exciting here early, just like in the first fight. Well, just when it looked like Mabuza was in dire straits, able to hold his own, he collected his thoughts, and then able to fire back and, and land effectively. Now, the difference in that round than some of the rounds we saw in the previous fight was Marquez had a really varied attack. Well, he threw a lot of left hooks. There were uppercuts, straight rights, the jab. Uh, it was a varied attack for him. Yeah, he was just coming at Mabuza from every angle, like an octopus. Here's some more straightforward attack, missing with the sweeping left hook there is Marquez. Mabuza now aiming for the, the belly. Mabuza's main hope in this fight is that great left hook to the body by Marquez is to really uh, use his hand speed and combination punches. So far, we have not seen as much of that as, uh, as he would like. Approaching midway round two, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Rafael Marquez in the black. Wearing the leopard is Mabuza. Blood coming from Mabuza's nose. So the first sign of blood here in this fight. Mabuza just can't resist languishing on the inside, and you can tell he wants to oh. trade hooks with uh, Marquez while very long. South of the border, and Mabuza will have five minutes. Accidental, accidental. The rule is if a fighter is hit below the belt and can't continue within five minutes, he loses. Nick Durant yelling from the corner, okay. silence, five minutes, telling him, take as long as you want. And it's the right way to do it. So, Al, you got any good recipes? <laughs> we could be here for a little bit as he uh, sits and relaxes with this. Well, you mentioned uh, Nick Durant reportedly right. under fire in his okay. native uh, right, South Africa, the clear. feeling that if Mabuza loses, so his reputation could plummet. He just had a he's all right. Yeah, he just had a tough loss with Cassius Beloy, who lost his title in a fight he was not expected to lose. And um, Durant, of course, one of the best known trainers in South Africa. Well, not that much time taken. Yeah. After five minutes, so uh, he's got a lot of scattered for the hunt. So just when I was getting quick to the recipe, too. <laughs> Hold it, we may need it. <laughs> so round two continues, Mabuza. Oh, he just takes a level there. A left hand by Marquez. Where's Marquez going to work? That jab set up that beautiful right hand. And it was a jab that set up the left hook that put Mabuza down in the first fight. Very effective weapon for Marquez. There it is again. A shotgun type jab. Oh, Very low and uh, created a big issue for, yeah, that was uh, very low, landing kind of in the thigh area uh, or more inside. And uh, 40 seconds taken by Mabuza. Later on, that jab and set up the right hand, and there had been a couple of good jabs before that from Arquez. Thunderous jabs, not just range finders, but punches that really hurt Mabuza. Hey, 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 watch the As Marquez gets ready, Dr. Damon Zavala in the Mabuza corner, examining the damage there. 
So it's round three. It has been a tough go so far for the challenger. Silence Mabuza getting the second crack at Marquez. Mabuza fought uh, four months ago. Marquez, uh, the last fight was back in November against uh, Mabuza. As Yogi Berra would say, it's deja vu all, all over, over again. again. Because we're seeing a very similar pattern to the last fight. The only difference is Mabuza hasn't been knocked down. And it's a dilemma versus a guy like Marquez. If you move to your right to avoid Marquez's right hand, you're exposed to his left hook. If you move to your left to avoid his left hook, you're vulnerable to his right. So both are very important. Do you want to repeat that for me? I have no idea what I just said. I'm going to send you a memo on that one. <laughs> the problem is that he's in trouble wherever he goes. That's what I meant. You know, and the issue for Mabuza really is, uh, you know, Marquez is a long fighter. He gets that jab out there in the right hand. He can hit you at long range. And Marquez is very good on the inside as well. Now, there's where Mabuza is starting to move his hands. He can throw a lot of punches and throw them quickly. The one thing about this kid, Mabuza, he is game. Yeah, very much so. Wow. Now, if he can get Marquez to, to lunge after him, to really attack more, there he can land counter punches like that jab Mabuza just landed. He's got to use that jab and that right more against uh, Marquez. You may have already mentioned that, talking about Mabuza. There's a nice right cross by Marquez to the head. Mabuza offering back, but Marquez able to uh, avoid a lot of those punches. Yeah. Put Marquez at the top of the head. You know what Mabuza's doing now, though? fun round of boxing. See, there's the jab from Mabuza. When he throws combinations, he can get no, some no, work no. done in there. And remember, let's keep it tucked in our back of our head. Uh, Marquez is at trouble making the weight. He's moving up the next time out. They want to take this fight into the middle rounds. That may help them. Mabuza has the ability to switch the softball, but it's not recommended And there's uh, Mabuza bouncing around, showing lateral movement, which is to his advantage against Raphael. Marquez shooting that jab, and then a three-punch combination by Marquez. Mabuza missing with the, the left, digging into the body with the uppercut. And here's Mabuza applying pressure. work by Mabuza. That could pay dividends later. It was a terrific sequence by Mabuza. Looks great right yep. to the chest by Mabuza. That's a much better round for the South African. Keep fighting. How are you feeling? Is it? When Mabuza goes straight up the middle and throws combinations, he can get some things done against Marquez. And look, even though those first punches missed, he was able to get in the inside and land some good punches against Marquez. So Mabuza needs to throw more than one punch at a time. Watching uh, in the dressing room, a very concerned brother, Juan Manuel Marquez, who is uh, standing by for his fight later tonight. But uh, he finds it very difficult to watch his, his brother fight. But he is doing it right there. Here we go, round four. This is really developing into uh, an interesting fight. Nacho Beristain talking to uh, Marquez Beristain with a great history of being able to transform straight ahead brawlers into good technical fighters like he's done with uh, Rafael Marquez. You know, in the seven and a half rounds that these two men have fought, that last one by far the best for Silence Mabuza. It's not a good idea from the trade hooks with him, but when he throws down a combination, Mabuza can get away with it. And look at more movement from Silence Mabuza now, not standing right in front of Marquez. So a sudden shift in this fight. We'll see if it continues. As we keep pointing out, uh, Mabuza's uh, team wants the Silence to try to take this thing as deep as he can, at least into the middle rounds, to try to uh, wear Marquez out, because Marquez has been having trouble making weight. 
There's a nice right hand by Marquez. The uppercut missed. The hand speed of McGregor is making the right now. Can't that uh, flurry was the most effective by Mabuza. That one uh, landed. Left uppercut raised. Missed with the right. Mabuza scoring more now. His connect percentage is getting higher. And there's a right hand over the top by Mabuza. Followed by a left uppercut. Missing wildly with that looping left. And that could be dangerous. And Mabuza's jab has become much more of a factor in this match than these last couple of rounds. But Mabuza on the uh, balls of his feet, really bouncing around. Uh, Marquez more flat-footed, as you can see. Mabuza, one thing about him out, in excellent tip-top condition. And that's one thing that kept him going after that first round knockdown in the first fight. But you can see what superb shape he is in here. And attack which will allow Mabuza to stay pressure, continue this movement. And that's right off the silence of Mabuza. That's a great point, yeah. Things are starting to look a lot rosier for Mabuza here, suddenly, after a very difficult start. Still has blood all over his face from the nose, but it doesn't seem to be stopping. He's tumbled by Marquez, but didn't have the kind of impact those punches were having earlier. There's a jab, beautiful jab by Marquez. Stopped Mabuse in his track, he has to regroup, and then he comes forward once again. Just with another left, and he grazed him with the right. Marquez was back. He says he did throw it in the Hey, don't forget to catch this summer's hottest show, Brotherhood, Sundays at 10 p.m. If you missed any episodes, you can see it from the beginning with a special marathon, August 19th, starting at 8 p.m. I can't wait for that. Uh, revisit some episodes on Brotherhood. It's a good series. Very appropriate, given tonight's theme. Yeah. Sure. Silence Mabuza in round four showed us what can happen when you throw combinations and you're accurate with your punches. Getting Marquez against the ropes, not everything landing, but he landed a significant amount of punches during that last round, and that was, I said the third was his best round, the fourth was his best so far. I'll do that for you, boss. Gunza, stick to the plan, in and fucking out. Durant, veteran trainer who's coached 58 South African champions, 15 world champions. He says Mabuza may be the best of all of his uh, South African champions. He is a straight talking, no nonsense guy. Now, Nick Durant suggested, you may have heard it, stick to the plan, he said to Mabuza. And that's important because the danger for Silence Mabuza is that he could get lured into a slugging match with Marquez because he's doing so well. He's still got to hit, 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 move away, come back, flurry a little, and then get out. Letting his fists fly. This is not the same Rafael Marquez we saw in the first fight. Well, he was for all around and three quarters. Now we look at press row Tom Gardner from the uh, Associated Press, Mike Houses of Nevada, the field, Mario Serrano, Premier Round Magazine. So after four rounds, they've got it as a majority draw. I have the good even so far in this fight. That close. Look at Marquez digging that left hook downstairs, getting back to that body work a little more. Marquez was more aggressive in the first fight. As you point out, I think the word you used was measure early on. More measured in this fight so far. But he can be explosive, and he uh, can turn a fight with one punch. We know that about him for sure. Yeah, that's the caution that we want to give to everybody, because there's no question Marquez can hurt you with a punch and absolutely change things. Good news is I don't think the heat is a big factor here right now. It, it was stifling uh, about an hour ago, but it has uh, cooled off just a bit, low 70s. And it's uh, fairly comfortable. Steve, do you get the same feeling I do that Marquez is almost...
being economical because you feel like maybe he's not sure he can throw a lot of punches every round and still be effective in later rounds. You know, yeah, it yeah. feels that way. That, and that's where the difference lies as opposed to the first round. To the forehand by Mapuzan, that got Marquez's attention. Again on the defensive as Mapuzan swings for the fences. And those are good, solid right hands, Mapuzan. Look at the move to silence Mapuzan. This is all Mapuzan now, very confident. This is the first round and performing valiantly here. No. How are you feeling? I'm feeling tired. No, no, no. Thank you. You feeling good? Yeah. You gotta get your hands up. You gotta keep your hands up. Plus change at the end of the round, and one that uh, while Marquez landed some punches, that was a great uppercut on the inside, but it didn't deter Mabuza. And Mabuza was able to wail away and land a very good right hand right at the end of the sequence. There's the right that pushed Marquez back. The hand speed of Mabuza really is the headline in this, uh, in this fight. It was starting to be just a little toward the end of their first fight. Well, at his best, Mabuza is the complete package, and we're starting to see that here. Lightning fast hand speed, as Al points out, throughout those fast combinations to the body. He's got heart, a good chin, and he's got power. He doesn't have the kind of power that Marquez has, but he does have decent power. He just made the questionable decisions in the first fight. I think this thing is a combination of Kabuza fighting a smarter fight as opposed to the first fight, and Marquez just not being the same kind of Marquez we saw in the first fight. Uh, I agree. It's, it's equal parts both those things, and what it's all adding up to is for Silence Mabuza, uh, a pretty good effort right now. Now for Marquez, what does he need to do to get back into winning these rounds? Use the jab. He's a very effective weapon. He was hurting him with it, and get back to throwing the hook. Uh, he's not throwing that much. He was tremendously effective in the first fight, and he's not throwing it enough uh, in this match. By the way, if it's not obvious enough that we are outdoors, that noise you may be hearing in the background is the wind whipping around and uh, affecting our microphone. The wind from the west of 16 miles per hour. So likely, it really is what it's turned into. It. Great setting out here. And a good crowd on hand. Over 3,000. And an arena that seats close to four. And it is just a, uh, an incredible setting. Whenever Mabuza throws more than one punch at a time, it freezes Marquez. There's no blow by Mabuza. And now Marquez will have five minutes to recover, so they're even. Here we go. Time in. Yeah, he only needed about five seconds. <laughs> it wasn't as drastic as the one uh, that was offered up earlier against Mabuza. Mabuza is a personal trainer. He teaches boxing size. And you know uh, some of his clients are looking at this uh, rooting line. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a left uppercut by Marquez. He's landed that punch a lot, but has been countered with the right hand by Mabuza over it. So he has to be careful about using that too much. There it is again by Marquez, and he missed it. He's enamored with that punch, and that's a dangerous punch right now. Marquez going to the body there. Who's is still on the move. Marquez more stationary. Oh, nice uh, left hand there by Marquez. That was Marquez countering, and he's not by nature a counterpuncher. Well, that's more like his brother. Yeah. We'll see you later. One down the other. Great counterpuncher. But Mabuza has some lock of the chest. Well, the difference is Mabuza backed him up after he got into those big shots. 
think that has to be playing a little quick. But please, with respect, I've got to get into the ring. The cameraman can't take over my job. Please, cameraman, don't touch her. The Whoa. fight is the most important thing here. You seen the cameraman? Yeah, he's in my way, man. It's beautiful, son. It's beautiful. Here is where the left hand straight low for Mabuza. And uh, Marquez took only a short time to recover. This was a terrific exchange toward the end of the round. Those left uppercuts by Marquez, very effective, but you see Mabuza coming back and landing that short chopping left to the chin of Marquez. And at the end of the round, another good exchange by both men. The difference is when Marquez backs him up this time around, Mabuza comes back with his own shots and his own good combinations. What a what a great fight this is turning into. Terrific sustained uh, two-way action. And now we can hear how intense things are getting in the corner with Nick Durant, who was uh, barking out instructions to the to the marshal in the corner about uh, the camera. He's just trying to do his job there with Mabuza. And it's getting very hot. And I don't mean temperature. Yeah, Durant, but we're concerned about the, the crowd again. Nice right hand by Rafael Marquez. And we're heading into that part of the fight. You know, we're at the halfway mark of it, where we have to start paying attention to, to, to how these fighters are doing in terms of stamina. Um, and also, um, and I've got the fight even, by the way, dead even. Uh, but we're, we have to look at Marquez and say, okay, we know it's hard to make the weight. We know the next fight is moving up in weight. Are the Mabuza people right that the longer this fight goes, the more they help their man? This was the game plan going in as you check out press row. It's still a majority draw. Tom Gardner from the AP, Mike Hauser of Nevada Appeal, Mario Serrano from Premier Round Magazine. And my score, as I suggested, 57 57. I have it a draw. The Mabuza Jack has been much improved in this fight, and that's a big part of the reason to get out some of those combinations. And remember, this is a rematch of a fight that ended in the fourth round last November. Mabuza having the fight end on cuts. And it was really the TKO, Mabuza's first loss. So here he is again, about nine months later, looking for revenge. And he is looking to change the course of the fight is Marquez. And in terms of motivation, the Booza feels, they feel very much that uh, the cut was caused by a clash of heads, inappropriate stoppage, and as you said, he turned out a shot at the WBA club just to get back to this fight. So this is a motivated fighter. He wants to beat Marquez very badly. He's showing us how badly he's on this fight. But this is a good round for Marquez. Uh, the Booza passed up the title fight, passed up a lot of money, took the circuitous route to get back here to fight Marquez again. That's how, how much of an insatiable appetite he had to get this fight again. And uh, he's not letting people down. Now in this round, Bill is moving a lot. He has not landed a lot of punches. And uh, this is a round he might be giving away to Rafael Marquez and could regret that one. I'll tell you what, Marquez is just missing with that right yeah. hand. It's just crazy. <laughs> A couple of good lead right hands by Mabuza there. Is that enough to get this round back to him? I don't think. This exchange there. Yeah. Well, the weather is now 75 degrees, your temperature. It's just gone up a couple of degrees. The wind from the west at 16 miles per hour. But in the forecast, possible isolated thunderstorms. Give me some water. You gotta throw, you gotta throw. You're throwing, but you can't leave him down. After the combination, immediately, your jab. Did you give him water to drink? Ready? Keep on jabbing, keep on jabbing. Come through with uppercut left foot. Side side, upper cut left to side side, okay? 
So an appreciative crowd of 3,200 on hand as we enter into round eight schedule for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship here in beautiful Lake Tahoe, Nevada. You know, it's important to have a focus corner. Nick Durant has provided that for Mabuza. Not getting overly excited about the power and reminding him again there. Uh, the side-to-side -side movement's important, and then suggesting an uppercut and a hook. Um, those dangerous punches from the job, he's getting away with them. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, Durant a little bit uh, under pressure from the South African uh, press for the uh, Cassius Beloit fight. They felt that he, he didn't offer the right technical instructions between rounds to Beloit. He won the title, and two months later lost to a nondescript guy. And so they're really... Uh, a little bit down on Durant, so if he can pull this one out. So there's a lot of emotion going on here with Mabuza and Durant. Mabuza wants this, uh, and Durant really wants it, too, for uh, other reasons outside of just uh, winning the championship, just to get his respect back from everybody. Mabuza is off to a very good start here in round eight after Marquez, I thought, had a good round seven. It's the combination of... So, uh, 
We shall see if uh, Marquez continues to wear him down and chisel away as he has been doing the last couple of rounds. Here's Press Row, and now it's a majority decision to Marquez. Two judges have it for Marquez, one even through eight. I've got it 77-75 for Rafael Marquez. So Marquez uh, starting to pull away, inch away here. See where it goes from this point. Christian Bruzzi went 12 in his last fight, winning against Vargas. Exciting and interesting fight, and for, for Silence Mubuza, a very, very difficult loss after he turned down one championship match to get to this one. In the last round, 
Rafael Marquez landing some monstrous shots this early in the round where he was landing these great left hooks and it was a punch that he took out of mothballs. There's the one to the body that I think did a lot of damage. He had not been throwing the left hook very much for a couple of rounds, Rafael Marquez. And once he did, it created this. And for the first time in the fight, Mabuza holding on. Then, later on in the round, the right hand part of the attack. And even those half hook, half jabs were so strong by Marquez. Forgotten sometimes in the label of big puncher is what an accurate puncher Rafael is. And he showed that in this fight. And uh, this is what led to the stoppage. And right at the end of the round, Marquez was just teeing off. Using the jab, though, and the straight right hand, one of the great things about Marquez is he never loses his poise, his composure, or his technique. He doesn't just get wild and use power. He's a very skilled fighter right now. Marquez uh, showing that he's in shape, going pretty deep into this fight. Look out in the higher weight yeah. classes. He's coming. Look out 122. Uh, he says, I want to fight the best. I want to unify that division now. We hear Israel Vasquez. Daniel Ponce de Leon, top-rated Oscar Larios, maybe Johnny Gonzalez if he moves up. Let's get the official word from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon. Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number nine. A referee in charge, Tony Weeks, calls a halt to the contest upon suggestion of the corner. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still... The IBF and IBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Rafael Marquez. So they say officially upon suggestion of the corner, the, uh, the slang term is he threw in the towel, although Durant never actually physically threw in a towel. But in any event, the chapter is closed here in our co-feature. Rafael Marquez holds up his end of the bargain in his final defense at 118 pounds. So coming up next from picturesque Lake Tahoe, Nevada, our main event, the WBO Interim Featherweight Championship, former champion Juan Manuel Marquez has long recognized as one of the most talented featherweights in the world, will take on top contender Terzak Zhandang of Thailand. But first, we're set for post-fight reaction from this uh, terrific fight, so let's go up to the ring and Jim Craig. Jim? All right, Steve, thank you very much. Raphael, congratulations. Felix De Jesus will interpret for us. This fight seemed to get a little tough for you in the third, fourth, and fifth rounds. Was it a bit of a surprise that he was able to rebound after that first round and, and put on such a good fight? Se te puso difícil la pelea en la tercera, cuarto y quinto asalto. ¿Te sorprendiste ya que él se estaba recuperando? Sí, claro, es un gran peleador él y este, realmente no lo descartamos realmente. Las dos perdidas que tiene son conmigo. Y bueno, es un gran peleador y una, y una gran pegada. He is a great fighter and, um, you know, he has a great punch, so I was a little surprised, but he did do a great job. What turned around this fight? What changed the complexion of it? ¿Qué fue lo que cambió la pelea? Bueno, este, eh, me metió este, unos golpes efectivos y bueno, me superé, me superé por mi condición y, y bueno, por eso tomé el segundo aire para, para seguir adelante. ¿no? He threw some effective punches, but uh, I turned it around when I got that second win, then it, sh it showed my strength. Were you concerned about getting a second win tonight, being on how? It was difficult for you to make this weight and that you will be moving up in the future? Ya que era difícil llegar a este peso, ¿tú creías que iba a llegar a tener esta segunda vuelta en ti? Bueno, este, realmente me preparé muy bien. Eh, ya no, ya, ya, este, ya era, no, no, o sea, no, ya, ya no iba a hacer esta pelea. Iba a subirme a las 122 libras y bueno, este, decidí hacer esta pelea por, por él, ¿no? Por él realmente, que realmente me, me decía que eran cabezados y bueno, ya lo... I was really going to go up to the 122 pounds, but I prepared myself well for this fight. Uh, the last fight ended in a headbutt, and I wanted to show that I'm a great fighter. Rafael, stay with us for just a moment. Let's bring in Silence Mabuza and uh, Dr. Damon Zavala, the attending ringside physician, has said that Silence will be going to the hospital here. They'll be taken in for a CAT scan and some stitches, as well as some plastic surgery over at Barton Medical Center. So let me ask you, first of all, how are you feeling and, and what is your condition? Look, currently I'm feeling okay and um, I'm so proud of my trainer to stop the fight because look at the cuts. I mean, check my face, you can see. Even the, the doctor was going to stop the fight maybe uh, the round later. So, you know, it was a good decision that we made to stop the fight. What made you decide 
to jump on in and stop it. I think, you know, if you have a look at the face, there's, there's, there's cuts, there's cuts. The ref would have probably stopped or the doctor would have stopped in another round. So what I need, my, my, my fighter's health is priority. And that's, you know, that's number one priority. It's not about those belts. It's about his health. And we'll be back. You know, this man, I believe, is moving up a division. We'll be back. That's the number one bantamweight in the world. This is the number two. What changed the complexion of this fight? You almost went down in the first round. You rallied. You had rounds that were very good in the third, fourth, and fifth rounds. And it looked as though you were in control of this fight. What, what changed? What happened? I didn't really say, you know, what happened. But, I mean, look, this is boxing. You know, now and then you get caught with the punches that uh, people outside cannot see. But as a boxer inside the ring, you can feel those punches. But nonetheless, I mean, look, he's a very strong boy. He's a tough boxer. Respect for my case. He came very hard. His face doesn't look like he's had a walk in the park either. So it was a Nick, good, good decision by you, Nick. You. Silence, terrific show tonight. We look sure. forward to seeing you in the future. Sure, thank you. All right, what will you do next, Felix? Ask him what he'll do next. Sigan, <laughs> stay. Los, los, los campeones este, de 122 libras, los mejores campeones que hay en, 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 en la división de, del CMB, de la FIB, del OMB o del MB, quiero enfrentarlos a los campeones de 122 libras. Es great champions in the 122 pounds, and that's uh, where I want to fight, and uh, I want to fight those champions there. Your brother was very nervous, Hermana, Hermana Señor, very nervous watching you. Uh, you're nervous watching him as he fights next? Tu hermano estaba muy nervioso viéndote pelear a ti, ¿tú ahora te vas a poner nervioso viéndolo a él? Sí, claro, me pongo muy nervioso este, este, viéndolo. Y estando aquí, pero bueno, ya este, venimos con una condición y, y una fortaleza, ¿no? Y realmente le, le agradezco a Gary Chau de, de, que, de que sea mi promotor y me siento muy contento. Yes, uh, I do get very nervous when he fights, uh, but he's in great condition, and I also want to uh, thank uh, Gary Shaw Productions. Rafael, congratulations to you. We look forward to seeing you fight in the future. Thank you very much. Felicidades a todos. Gracias. Muchas gracias. All right, back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Before we show you the, the numbers, the scoring by Press Row and the official ringside judges, let's listen to what happened in the corner after round nine with Nick Durant and Silence Mabuza. Five punch. Here you go. Huh? No more? That's it. That's it. It's over. It's over. Elito. You know that? All right, so that's uh, that's what happened to the quarter. I, did, was it silence Mabuza? It almost said sounded almost? as if he suggested it and Durant agreed. It, and uh, in any case, it was a joint decision and they decided no point in going on. Okay, here's the scoring. At the time of the stoppage, Adelaide uh, Bird had an 88-83 Marquez. Bird Clements, 87-83 Marquez. And Glenn Feldman for Marquez, 88-83. Uh, so he really pulled away. Yeah, uh, Marquez had taken control of this fight and was really dominating after the good middle rounds by Mabuza. And we'll check out the press row uh, scoring. Tom Gardner from the AP had an 88-83 Marquez. Mike Hauser from the Nevada Appeal had Marquez by three points. And... Mario Serrano from the uh, Premier Round magazine had Marquez the closest, 86-85. And this was a very competitive fight, despite the fact that Marquez had taken control. Very interesting fight. A lot of courage shown by Silence Mabuza, and uh, a terrific champion makes his seventh defense of the IBF Bantamweight title. And before we continue our coverage from Lake Tahoe, Nevada, here's a word about one of our original series and what's on the boxing horizon. Call him. 